everyone. Are you ready to explore some of the concepts that you will see on the FTC Praxis in Texas Science Elementary Certification Exam? My name is Kimberly Stalker and I am the Science Specialist here at Learning Liaisons. But before we begin, please remember to like and subscribe. If you have any questions, please comment below. Before we begin, I want to go over a couple directions. I am going to give you 60 seconds to answer each of the following five questions. There will be a timer on the screen. I will go over each question with you after the 60 seconds is up. If you want to download a PDF copy of these questions, text the phrase Y-T-S-C-I-E-N-C-E S-E T1, that's Y T Science Set 1 to this phone number, 407 269 8829. Let's do this. Question 1 C A C O 3 yields C A O plus C O 2. In the chemical reaction shown above, the products are best classified as A, two elements, B, one element and one compound, C, two compounds, or D, two compounds and one element. I'll give you 60 seconds to think about that and we'll come back and we'll go over the answer. All right, let's find out the answer. So the answer to this question is C, two compounds. So let's explore why this is the answer to the question. So the main thing about science is the vocabulary terms. So if we're reading the question, it mainly says the products. It's asking about those products. And in a chemical equation, we always start off the reactants, then we yield the, yield the products. So we're gonna be focusing on these two right here. That's the only thing that we need to look at. So as we're looking at our answer choices, two elements, how can you determine what an element is? So elements are either going to be an uppercase letter and a lowercase letter or just one uppercase letter like this. And if you see in our reactants or our products, the ones that we're looking at right here, I don't see any just an uppercase and lowercase or just an uppercase letter. So we can automatically eliminate that answer. And if you look further, because we don't see any elements, we can also eliminate B because it says element in there as well. And we can eliminate D because it has element in there as well. So that concludes two compounds. Now again, a compound, just like a compound word, rain and bow, it's gonna put two elements together to make that. And that's exactly what we have here. We've put calcium and oxygen together to make that compound. And we've put carbon and oxygen together to make that chemical compound. Great job, get ready for the next one. Number two. A student uses a magnet to move a 0.025 kilogram metal ball. The magnet ex exerts a force of 5 newtons, which causes the ball to begin moving. What is the acceleration of the ball when it begins to move? A. 200 meters per second squared. B. 0.125 meters per second squared. C. 5 meters per second squared, D, 
5.025 meters per second squared. I'll give you some time, some 60 seconds to work this out, and we'll be back to go over the answer. Okay, so let's take a look at this problem. The answer for this question is A, 200. So while you're looking at this question, we're going to pick out, again, what is the question asking us for? So if we read it, it says, what is the acceleration of the ball? So that's what we're trying to find. But in order to find that, we have to see what we're given. So in this question, change my color, we are given the mass, and we know this is mass because it's kilograms, and that is the unit that we can use to measure mass in. And we're also given the force, which is five newtons. So for this problem, we're going to need the equation. So for this equation, we are going to do force equals mass times acceleration. And in this case, let's simplify the problem. So we have our force, like we said in the problem, was 5 newtons. Our mass is 0 0.025 kilograms. And remember, we know that's mass because it is in kilograms, and that's how we measure mass. And then our acceleration is what we are trying to find. So now we're going to plug in our numbers. So if you can see, we have 5 equals 0.025, that goes with my mass, times my acceleration, or my unknown variable. Then I want to make sure that I isolate this unknown variable, so in order to do that, I am going to divide by my mass, and what I do to one side, I have to do to another side as well. Now, you can write it as a long division problem. So you're going to write it out like this. Now, if you see, we have a decimal here. So we want to try to make this a whole number. So in order to do that, we're going to have to move this decimal over to the right. So we're going to move it one, still not a whole number. So we're going to move it again, still not a whole number. So we're going to move it one more time. So since we've moved it three times to the right, we're also going to have to put three zeros on here. So I'm going to rewrite this so it looks a little bit better. So we have now have 25 and then 5,000. So we're going to look at this first. So 25 can't go into 5. So we're going to go on to the next number. 25 can go into 50. It can go into 50 two times. Now if you notice, Looking at your answer choices, the only answer choice that starts with the 2 is A. So there you go. The answer is A, 200 meters per second. Get ready for question number 3. In the classroom demonstration shown, a rubber ball is dropped from position. The ball bounces as shown. At which of these positions does the ball have both the greatest kinetic energy and the least potential energy. A, position one, B, position two, C, position three, and D, position four. I'm gonna give you 60 seconds to try this problem and then we'll go over the answer.
Okay, let's look at the answer. So for this question, the answer is B, position two. Now, as we're looking at it, again, let's pick out the key science words in this question. We need to look at which one has the greatest kinetic energy and the least amount of potential energy. So I always look at these as a seesaw. When one's the highest, the other one's the lowest. So we know kinetic energy has to do with energy in motion or energy being released, where potential energy has to do with energy that is stored up inside and something has the most potential when it's stopped or at the greatest height. So looking at this picture, let's start off at position one. Position one, we notice, is at the greatest height. So because it's at the greatest height, that one is actually going to have the most potential energy and the least amount of kinetic because it's not all being released yet. So we can eliminate position one. Then we look at position three. Let's look at position three for a second. We know that this is kind of in the middle, both three and four are in the middle. We know we're looking for our extremes, the greatest and the least. So we can automatically eliminate those as well. For B, we're all the way down at position two. Position two, you see, has the least amount of height. Because it has that least amount of height, it's going to have the least amount of potential energy, and therefore all of the energy is going to be released in motion, and it's going to have the greatest amount of kinetic energy. So this answer is B, position two. Okay, let's get ready for our next one. Number four, a group of organisms of one species living in the same place refers to its A, community, B, population, C, ecosystem, or D, biome. I'm going to give you 60 seconds to have you try it and then we'll go over it. Okay, let's see. So for this question, the correct answer is B, population. So this has to do with organisms and species. So for this, I like to draw an upside down triangle just to organize all of our information. And let's look at the different levels. So the simplest form, the simplest form on its own is going to be an individual species. Then, when we put a group of those species together, we create a population. Then a bunch of different populations are going to be a community. And then once we have a bunch of communities together, that is going to be an ecosystem, which is going to consist of living and non-living things. And then a bunch of ecosystems together, so a bunch of these triangles together, is going to be a biome. So looking at this and your question, it says a group of one species. So one type of species. So when we look at that, a group of them is going to be our next one up, which is a population. So that is the answer B. Okay, let's get ready for number five. Number five. Which of the following is not a reaction to an internal stimuli? A, hunger pains. B, excessive thirst. C, feeling sleepy. D, running a fever. I'm gonna give you 60 seconds. 
Let's give it a shot and then we'll come back and debrief and go over the answer. Okay, let's check this question out. So, number five, the answer for this one is, drum roll please, C, feeling sleepy. Now in this question, there's a key word in here that says not, and sometimes that can trick us up. So we're looking for one that is not an internal stimuli, which basically means comes from within and it stimulates or it allows us to react to something that's going on. So a main key thing about a stimuli is our body needs to maintain homeostasis. And homeostasis just makes it a balance. It's a balance between our body. So when we're looking at these things, when we feel hunger pains, it's because our body's telling us we need those um, calories and that energy. Same thing with thirst. Our body's telling us, you know what? We're dehydrated, we need to start drinking. All of those are coming from internal. And then feeling sleepy though has nothing to do with maintaining our homeostasis. Running a fever, again, that tells us, okay, there's something going on in our body that's not going right. So that's our internal reaction. So we know to try to maintain our body temperature. So in this case, hunger pains is a correct answer Excessive thirst is a correct answer for internal stimuli and running a fever. So what's not the correct answer is feeling sleepy. Woohoo! Great job! So passing your certification exam is about three things. Knowledge, skill, and attitude. Knowledge is about knowing about your test, knowing how many questions are on it, what's going to be tested, what concepts are going to be on it. Skill is about practicing and knowing those test taking strategies like how to dissect a question or pull out those key science vocabulary terms. And attitude is about gaining that confidence through reliable resources like learning liaison. I am so proud of you all so, so much. And always remember, it's when you pass, not if you pass. Hope to see you again in other science videos. Bye.